Hi, I'm Peppy and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm Farmzy and I'm 9. And we're not ashamed of our faith. Come here. Closer. There's something I need to tell you. I've been struggling with something for quite a while and I'm having a hard time giving it up. I can't give up video games. Peppy, you don't have to whisper to the camera like that. Because once people see you on YouTube, they can hear it all. Oh, right. Yeah, I've been having a hard time giving up video games. There's nothing really wrong about video games, but when your parents try to limit the amount you play every day, then you should probably obey them. And if you don't obey them, that's a problem. Well, when we try to give up something that we're not, that we have to give up, but we can't, it's like putting that thing, making that thing more important than God. And which is wrong because God tells us to submit to our parents' authority and to honor them. So your parents know best for you. And the, if they tell you that you should not play video games, you should obey them because they know what bad for you and what's good for you but the temptation is so hard i can't give up video games i know that feeling so how do we avoid sin and fight the good fight of faith we already know that christ gave us victory over sin but now we have to battle the sin in our lives All of the world's problems can be traced to one of three things. The world, the flesh, and the devil. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. This world that the Bible is talking about is about the people around us and how they think. Often, they turn us away from God. The world's ways are usually not compatible with God's design for our lives. For example, like when you go out, don't you always see billboards and TV ads and even people saying, you deserve more, you deserve the best, you need more stuff. You know, stuff like that. But actually, we're sinners and we don't really deserve anything good. But by Jesus' grace alone, He's the one He gives us blessings that we don't even deserve. If you allow the worldly ways to enter your mind, and they will brainwash you and you will think that those things are true. What we really need to do is renew our minds so that we can be transformed instead of conformed to the world. We should flip the world upside down. That means that we should fo not follow the worldly ways but instead follow God's ways. Yeah, so I need to get video games out of my mind. Yeah, whenever we give in to temptation, we violate the purpose God calls us to. So the second root of the world's problems is the flesh. Okay. James 1 verses 13 to 16 say, And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. This verse says that we give in to temptation because of our evil desires, which also lead us into being attracted to evil things. Have you noticed that a lot of the evil things are actually fun? Like playing video games all day 
and eating burgers and fries all day long for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and lying to get out of trouble? Well, being tempted is not bad. It's how you respond to temptation. We shouldn't give in to our evil desires. Also, we should make the right decision and we should give in to temptation. Oh, we should not give in to temptation. Evil seems more attractive than godly things. Like, do I read the Bible or do I listen to music that has bad messages? Do I pray or do I go to a party where people say bad words and sneakily play iPad? Well, people think that the Christian life is very boring, but actually, all you have to do is open your eyes and see what God can do. God best our family with another baby. He gives us many blessings. When we go to Bible study, he's able to give us friends that love and obey God that, like we do. When we obey our parents, he, they're able to give us, they are able to trust us more and they give us more freedom to do stuff because they know that we're going to follow their rules. So we should resist the flesh and our evil desires. They can destroy us. The last root of the world's problems is the devil. We can, the devil actually exists. He's real. And we can expect him to oppose us because he doesn't want us to follow God's command. And he doesn't want us to come close to God. Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 12 say, A final word, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Our enemy is the devil and his forces. Some people believe that the devil doesn't exist, but he's actually happy that we think that because if you don't believe he exists, then we don't believe that he is the one causing all the evil in our lives. You see, the devil wants us to be ineffective Christians, and he doesn't care if we believe that he, we, that he exists or not. He just doesn't want us to have a relationship with God. The devil can tempt the whole world. He even tempted Jesus. And if he can tempt Jesus, he can tempt you too. He knows our weak spots and he will try to tempt us until he gets us to sin. He knows our, if he knows our weak spots, he knows when and where to strike. Since the world, the flesh, and the devil are all against God's plan for our lives, then we need another plan to overcome our sin. Our first step is to read the Bible, pray, and stand up against the world. Psalm 119 verses 9 to 11 say, How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart, that I might not sin against you. The Bible gives us the truth and the standards for Christian living. So if we want to be like Jesus, we should read the Bible and we should fight against the temptation of the world. Luke chapter 11 verses 1 to 4 say, One, Jesus was in a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray just as John taught his disciples. And Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. 
May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. When we pray, we can ask Jesus to help us stay away from people, places, and situations that might tempt us. Prayer can bring us closer to God so He can tell us how we can live our lives. Pray against temptation. He knows that we will be tempted and He wants us to be ready. So He gave, but He knows that we can't do it alone, so He gave us the Holy Spirit. The second step is to flee from temptation. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 says, Run from anything that stimulates youthful lusts. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. There are times when it's really hard not to sin because there are some people that have bad influences on us. So we should know those people and recognize them so we should stay away. Prevention is always better than a cure. The last step is to resist the devil. But how do we do that? Submit yourself to God. Um, resisting the devil is easier when you have the Holy Spirit in you. Well, when you resist the devil, it you will have a sure victory in your Christian life. My brother sometimes thinks he's no match for temptation, but actually in the Bible, it says that it's not true. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, He will show you a way out so that you can endure. God will not ever give temptation, but He allows temptation. And He never ever allows temptation that you cannot bear. So He will also provide a way out, His way out. So you will never ever have to use the excuse, I couldn't resist it. To help us in all of this, we need to be controlled by the Holy Spirit to get rid of temptation. God gave us the Holy Spirit so we can have a blessed and meaningful life. But the Holy Spirit only comes when you have accepted Jesus into your heart. Many people say, that it's hard to live the Christian life. Some even say it's impossible. But really, I always tell people, including my brother, that with the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible. It's the Holy Spirit in us that makes us do things to please God. Ephesians 5.18 says, Don't be drunk with wine, because you that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think it's silly that people get drunk with alcohol until they can't control themselves anymore. But once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you can con you're not controlling yourself. It's God that's controlling you. So you have the power to obey Him. Like my brother who is having a hard time giving up video games, we all make mistakes, but once we have the Holy Spirit in our hearts, we can have positive results and victory over sin.